In statistical hypothesis testing, we actually have to be very firm about how we create our null and alternative hypotheses. They follow very particular patterns that we must abide by. So you have a null hypothesis. H stands for hypothesis. Zero, that's a zero, stands for um, no effect. So it's the thing that you assume to be true unless evidence indicates otherwise. So it's a statement of no change, no difference uh, in the population parameter of interest. So H sub zero, H zero, H naught is what it's called. All right, and then the alternative hypothesis is H1 or HA. Um, that's a statement that claims there is some change, either that it's more or less or different for the population parameter. So a hypothesis test is like a trial. So we start by assuming the null hypothesis is true. Then we gather evidence and we test that. And we will reject it and believe that an alternative hypothesis is true if we have strong enough evidence against that null hypothesis. So the potential parameters of interest for us for hypotheses are mean population, mean. Of course, these are all parameters, right? the population proportion. And these are the ones we're going to actually work with. Um, we will actually, in this section, work with these other two, but they're from the section that's been cut from this chapter because hypothesis tests for the population standard deviation or the population variance are actually a little bit more difficult. So we're not going to do those unless otherwise stated in the semester that you're taking the course. All right, so we can either have a left-tailed test, a right-tailed test, or a two-tailed test. Now, the left and right-tailed are both called one-tailed tests, just something to know, because they only go in one direction. So you can have a left-tailed or a right-tailed test. They're both one-tailed tests. So a right-tailed test, which is a one-tailed test, can says that the parameter is equal to some value and says the parameter is greater than some value. So let's think of some keywords that you're going to be looking for when you see problems um, for hypothesis tests, how are you going to know it's a right-tailed test? All right, well, a right-tailed test, that second symbol is greater, of course. So greater would be a good word to look for. Uh, let's see here. Greater is one. Uh, more. Increase. Uh, above. Goes up exceeds, right, which all means increasing, above, I already said, I'm just trying to think, more, increase, increased, at least, that's another good one, it's at least this much means it's greater than, and obviously you can add to this, this would be the kind of thing you would put on your note sheet, and as you run into more problems, you can add to your keywords for greater than, right here. All right, so let me just give you an example. Um, the standard deviation in pill bottles. So it seems a little strange, but um, you actually don't want your pill bottles to waver very much. So imagine a giant pill bottle of 500 pills, 500 Tylenol pills, for example. So if you want 500 Tylenol pills in the bottle, you can accept a little bit of variation from that. Say of a couple pills, give or take. So the standard deviation could be two pills, but then if you think something's going wrong with the machine, then the standard deviation is greater than two pills. It's wavering by more than a couple, um, give or take, right? So the standard deviation is the give or take, right? That's a take. So if it's give or take, and if it's give or take has gotten too much, that's a big problem for manufacturing. As a matter of fact, standard deviation is very commonly looked at in manufacturing because they don't like machines to have a lot of variation. They want a machine or a robot to have very little variation. So they're going to assume it's very little variation and then um, see if they can prove that it's gotten too much and then they have to recalibrate the machine. All right, what about left-tailed? Well, left-tailed, uh, let me go with uh, blue color here just for some variety here. So a left-tailed test is a less than for the alternative. Now notice that the null hypothesis always has equals. So they are both equals, but the, it's the alternative hypothesis is going to have a direction because the null hypothesis is assuming things are true unless you can prove it otherwise. So some words to look for would be, um, well, obviously less or lesser, uh, smaller, 
decrease below goes down Oop, down <laughs> I was making that one word that's not one word. goes down there we go um, decrease I already said decreased and then exceeds the companion to exceeds is reduces is below right I already said below and then how about at most at most three students did this right so that means three or less so in a classic example of this is the body temperature so everybody thinks body temperature is this but I'm going to argue that body temperature is actually this and that's very much true <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know this is being proven more and more and they think there's a variety of reasons why that's happening what well, I believe see that in a later example anyway but body temperature is lower than 98.6 especially in um, western industrialized nations with good health care and they think that might actually have something to do with it in fact if you're interested fascinating research in the last 10 years into body temperature all right now what about two-tailed tusks so a two-tailed tusk doesn't pick a particular direction so it doesn't say look below and it doesn't say above it just says not equal to so it means it could go either direction and when we think about our dice example that was an example of this because we assumed the population parameter was one-sixth we assumed the dice were fair and the proportion of fives was one-sixth and if the die is not fair then it's not one-sixth so this would be the die is fair these would be symbols over here this would be words right so the die is fair die is not fair you're not picking a particular direction for it right you're just saying that it's not fair ah so there's one of the big words <laughs> you saw it well obviously different right that would be a, a key one for not equal to and not the die is not fair that's a key word a changed that's another one right I don't know why I put that in quotes so changed is another one there's not a lot of words for different so it's going to be the hardest one to spot so you can make it a little note right the different one is going to be tricky especially if it's the word not because it's such a small three-letter word to fit into a giant paragraph and so that'll be a little tricky to find And I encourage you to add to this list as you go. So as we go through the course or as we go through this chapter, if you find more words that would cue in a less than, a greater than, a less than, or a not equal to, you can add them to your list and put that on your note sheet for your exam.